What's that? Welcome back to the Jeremiah Show. My special guest today, Astrid Young. Astrid Young rocks. <laughs> She's a singer, songwriter, pianist. Uh, plays the bass guitar and the 12 string guitar. She's also a uh, little, I don't know if it's a little known secret, but she's a sommelier. She loves wine and the wine business. And that's a whole nother show probably for another time. I wanted to uh, do this in reverse a little bit here, Astrid. And, and now that we've jumped into the interview full, full steam ahead, I wanted to kind of back up to your youth. You have a musical family. Yeah. Uh, Somewhat, anyway. I have a very musical family. It's interesting, though, that me and my brother are the only musicians in my side of the family. When you get to my my Uncle Bob and my Aunt Dorothy, all of their kids are musicians, and they're all brilliant, you know? Oh, yeah. And, they, yeah, it's crazy. So you've said your brother a couple of times, but I haven't, I haven't given that away. Who's your brother? Neil Young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe they put everybody put it together with the last name Young. Huh? Um, hmm. So, did you, when growing up, was it was it the two of you, or were there other siblings that were into music? No, I, we have an older brother also uh, named Bob, and uh, I have a half sister, uh, Deirdre, and they're all older. They're all quite a bit older. So, my sister is uh, eleven years older. Neil's 16 years older and Bob is 20 years older. So and you're the baby. Um, yeah. And <laughs> I was, you know, my sister was around until I was about 10 years old with the, but uh, Bob and Neil were, were pretty much gone. Uh, you know, hmm. we, we saw them relatively frequently, uh, but Neil moved to the U S in the mid sixties, mid to late sixties there. And yeah. And I actually used to go down to California and visit him when I was a kid too. So we've always maintained a close relationship. So he was 16 years old or so there wasn't like any collaboration of music, playing music together when you were young. And the, in the, I mean, I know you do now, but. Uh, then... <laughs> we didn't, well, we didn't start playing together until, um, uh, till Harvest Moon actually. Yeah. So that would have been, he was recording Harvest Moon 91. So that's when that started. I mean, he uh, tried to pull me in on a couple of tours. Um, he actually, my band was supposed to open up for him on a tour uh, in the eighties and the tour didn't happen. So obviously that didn't happen. Um, and, you know, I mean, I've always been excited to share, you know, mm -hmm. what I'm doing with him. And sometimes I think he listens to it and sometimes I'm not sure. And Every once in a while, I mean, I remember the one time he called me up and he said, hey, I really like the reverb you used on this song in this part right here. And it's just like, I'm going, holy crap, you actually listen to it. That's uh, well, yeah, you, right. and you play, you sing on Harvest Moon, you said, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. I thought I was reading through some of the stuff on your, on your website. And I thought this was such a cool fact. I didn't realize this. Maybe I knew this and maybe I didn't. That Harvest Moon has been in space. What yeah. That <laughs> the song is like, is it like in a capsule or something? Or it was uh, no, I think I think the astronauts just took it to the space station. But you know, when they do that, they act, they make it official. They you know because they sent them a plaque saying you you know Harvest Moon has been officially played in space. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that cool. was cool. <laughs> that is very cool. I, who can say that? Now, Betty, you're you're you've been you've been in space. Yeah, uh, well, especially for a little sci-fi nerd like myself, you know. So right. Yeah. We'll talk about that for a minute. I don't want to get too far off because I want to. I want to give your uh, musicians and your producers and stuff some air, some time here and mm -hmm. accolades. But what is that? Because I, I noticed that there's in your email and your on your website there's Astrid Spaceship. What is that? Oh, Spaceship. Well, you know. Okay, so for the second LP, uh, we were. It was between two names. It was between Spaceship and how the beautiful get away with murder. And recently we've decided to call it how the beautiful get away with murder, but it's a rather long name as you can understand. So, but spaceship was kind of like the working title for it for a little while. And uh, yeah. So anyway, that's where okay. that. Oh my God. I'm looking through. My and it's question. also a name. It's also the name of one of the new songs on, on the record too. Spaceship. Well, uh, you have four solo albums. So mm -hmm. brain flower. The yep. first, Matinee. I love this name. I'm going to see if I can do it right. Pacalola Paniolo. Oh, you did it for me. Okay. Thank you, because I would have embarrassed myself. That's okay. That's a, another great, you're great with titles. 
And then One Night of Giant Rock, which was produced by Victor Di Lorenzo, uh, who is an original Violet Femme, as you probably Violent Femme fans already know. Um, okay, so let me ask before, let me see where I got it. We got to take a break here in a couple minutes again. Um, let's talk about your music heroes. Start with Eddie Kramer. You've, you've mentioned him a little bit here, but what does a producer like Eddie bring to your music? And can you describe, can you capture that magic that he brings? <laughs> and, and the wow. Well, I can, I can, well, I mean, his name is on all my favorite records, almost mm -hmm. all of my favorite records, you know, List from a couple. Name uh, well, Satanic Majesty's Requests, which is a very obscure Stones record, but he did that one. All the Hendrix records, you know, five Led Zeppelin records, um, you know, Rolling Stones. I mean, holy crap. That I'll, I'll tell you my moment, though. Like when we started working in there and we did Lay Me Down and um, kind of a little story behind that, too, because I had already cut the vocal and we recut the rhythm tracks and then put a string section on it. And I had wanted to recut the vocal, but he really liked the vocal that was already on there. So we went with that. Uh, but he did a little edit to the song and he messed around with the EQ, whatever he does, you know, and he said, okay, so I, I have a version of the song and I want you to come and listen to it, you know? So I went over to his little studio and, and sat in the room and he, and he threw it up on the monitors and we listened to it. And my jaw was just on my chest. I couldn't believe how good it sounded. Right. And I just like a call all the wheels spinning in my head. And after that, I ran home and I had to pull out physical graffiti and, and put it on. And it's just like, holy crap, there is there's the vocal sound. There it is. Right. Mm -hmm. That's it. You know, and it's like having that sound, that richness, like planted on my voice. Holy crap. I mean, that's like the a rock and roll dream. <laughs> Dreams do come true. <laughs> yeah. No, it's pretty incredible the 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 people that that came together to make this happen. Yeah, well we've got to take a break. I, I'm so sorry to keep cutting this up or this great conversation up. We do have to take our last break. Um do you want to mention before we go uh Victor Di Lorenzo or David J? Yeah. Uh, no just briefly here you know you've talked about them a little bit but um you know how they contributed and yeah for them well um victor actually plays in a band with david called night crickets and uh you know of course i have been a big love and rockets Bauhaus fan from way back in the day and uh so when Victor called me up one day and you know we were talking about doing these sessions and he said david wants to know if if you would like him to play on the record. And I was just like, oh my God, you know, I don't even have to think about that. That's so cool. And it's funny because the first time I talked to David on the phone, I think I was babbling like a schoolgirl. It's like, ah, I didn't know what to say. It was so funny. But, you know, we have so many things in common. And I ended up playing piano on a, on a, on the new Night, Night Crickets record on one song. And uh, we... Uh, co-wrote a song together, David and I. Um, he contributed lyrics to a song that I had, I mean, I basically had a fully formed song with with melody and everything like that. And I said, if you got any ideas for the lyrics, let me know. And he and he texted me and he goes, I, I'm just imagining his, his English accent. He said, I have lyrics for this that fit just like OJ's glove. <laughs> and it was called How the Beautiful Get Away with Murder. And the ironic thing about that is that that's, that's, <laughs> I wrote, I wrote, yeah, well, <laughs> I wrote it. I wrote a screenplay uh, in the eighties and nineties and kind of a long story around that, but it's called haunted when the minutes drag, which is actually the name of a love and rockets record. And uh, I didn't want him to, to tell him this because I thought it was a little bit too fangirlish. Right. But when he dropped this, this, set of lyrics on my lap because the the movie itself the film itself it's about a female rock star who's a serial killer right and i yeah, thought that's... now he didn't know anything yet. about this this is just so out of the blue you know anyway and at, at that point i had to tell him 
What's up? You got to bring that script back. I haven't seen that one before. That would be, be fun to watch. <laughs> <That one> <laughs> it got made as a short film, but it's it's really, to be quite honest, it's a piece of crap. So I, I you know, it, it won a couple of awards and festivals, but I was never happy with the way it came out. So I decided I'm going to okay, write a book. And it. It. <laughs> now, do you, do you, if I'm reading through your site w while you did this album, did you make a documentary following the making of the album or the, the in-studio? <laughs> Well, now that's another loaded question because we did do a lot of filming and uh, unfortunately having a little conflict with the cinematographer right now. So I haven't actually seen any of the footage and uh, he's got about 40 hours of footage that I'm that I'm waiting on right now. And, and hopefully, uh, hopefully he can. Well, we won't promote that until you get it all worked out. And then. We can <laughs> yeah, it. thanks. Okay. But it's coming. It's coming at some point. I just don't know when. Well, Okay, so let's go to let's take our last break and we'll come back and say goodbye and uh, talk about a couple more things okay. real quickly. But uh, I am a special guest today. If you're just tuning in, and if you are just tuning in, go back to the beginning. You can pick up the podcast if you're missing this on the radio. Astrid Young, just been a great hour of Astrid Young, just an amazing musician since the '80s. She has been performing and and uh, bringing us new stuff. Uh, her albums. She's got a few albums without four, four albums. Brain Flower, so you can check that out. Matinee, Pocololo Peniolo. Yeah. <laughs> Did I do it? One Night at Giant Rock is the most current, and uh, which was produced by Victor De Lorenzo, an original violent femme. And uh, it's just an incredible. Also, Eddie Kramer, um, producer, uh, David J. You got to check this album out. We're playing it actually throughout the show today we're going to take you to break right now with uh let me see make sure i've got the right one we're going to go out with uh amy's song amy's song no 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 yeah yeah amy's song <laughs> i'm i'm arguing with myself okay we'll be right back <laughs> <in the boat. laughs> 